Hey everyone, welcome to Ask Me Monday number 136. I am Vicki Howell, here with you as I am three Mondays a month at noon central, live on Facebook, and then whenever you want to watch later as a replay on Facebook or YouTube or IGTV to start out your week creatively. I am at my home studio in Austin, Texas, and I would love to hear where you are watching from. If you are watching the replay later and you're not interested in the conversation that we have in the comments section and back and forth, please feel free to fast forward to the tutorial section and you'll know where it is because you'll see only my hands. This episode is brought to you by our friends over at Knitter's Pride or Knit Pro if you are outside North America. They are great needles and hooks um, and knitting and crochet tools, supplier, manufacturer, based in India. They do a ton of good work for women in India and are supportive of independent makers like myself. So along with telling me where you're watching from, I would also love to hear about how you fed your creative well this weekend. So it is so miserably hot here in Texas and there is no end in sight of 100 degree plus days. So it's almost too hot to make, which is why today we're going to be focusing on a lace stitch. And I'll talk to you more about that in a second. But I had, I had intended to do a ton of making this weekend. My daughter um, has this like particular outfit for school. She has a whole look that she's created in this app. Um, for what she wants for her first day of school. And the shirt doesn't exactly exist in life, so we're altering one, so I plan to do that. Um, I was hopefully going to finish an Ogden cami hack um, longer dress that I like to sleep in. I was gonna cut out a knit dress. I, let me just tell you, I did none of those things. Um, I did make the crochet project for September Yarnier, and I worked on the October crochet project for Yarnier, so I did do something. Um, and then I cut out a pattern for a purse that I wanna make, a cross body purse, but that was really all I had. Um, I worked on a puzzle a little bit more, um, but really it was just, it was too darn hot, frankly. So um, that's a bummer when it's too hot to even think about making. So all I could think about doing was working with lighter weight materials like a linen or a cotton um, and maybe, and working with some open weave stitches. So that brings us to today's um, tutorial, which is the herringbone linen stitch. So. Here's a better piece. So this is a great stitch for, um, this is an actual, this is a coaster from the August Yarnier box. That's one of the patterns. I'll talk to you more about that in a second too. Um, but it works for home decor stuff like placements and coasters. It also works for washcloths. It would be great for a swimsuit cover up or a top layered over, you know, obviously tank top or whatever. It would also work as just a wrap um, it's a really versatile stitch. I like it because of that, and I also like it because it's not complicated. Um, and if you get like, you know, like the brain fog mush that I do when it's really hot outside, you don't want to have to really focus on a chart or memorizing a ton of stitches. And this, this really, this is a multiple of three stitches, and it's only two rows to remember. So really doable, um, and that's what, gonna, what we're gonna focus on today. So hello to Francine from Belgium, and Gloria is also in hot Texas. Um, good to see Rose, um, who's working on blankets. Um, Peggy from Tucson, oh, Peggy from Tucson. I shouldn't even be complaining about weather. I was just there and woo. That feels, you feel like you've been punched in the face with heat when you're in that part of Arizona. Um, Polly is working, um, oh, Polly, that's not nice just put her feet under a blanket because it's cool. Don't flaunt your awesome weather, Polly. Um, good to have you here. So um, let's go ahead and turn over this. All you need for this particular um, tutorial is any yarn and, and the corresponding needles. At vickihell.com, I have put the stitch pattern. I've put a write-up for a swatch and I've also written up a pattern for a washcloth. So you'll be able to go back and reference all of that. And that will include where to get the tools I'm using today, um, the yarn and the needles. The needles that I'm using, I'll flip over and show you, but they are um, Knitter's Pride Ginger needles. This is actually a bigger size because I have the size I'm using um, 
in, in work right now. Um, and there's, I'm using circulars. You don't need them for that, but um, I just really prefer working on circulars. It's much easier on my wrist because all the weight of the knitting is just in my lap. So you can get those um, in my shop, which is yarnier.com or wherever you get your Knitter's Pride and Knit Pro, Knit Pro tools. Okay, let's go ahead and flip over and we will talk about the two rows involved in making this stitch pattern. So those of you that watch every week know that the that this is live and shot on a phone because we're old school like that. And so this part is never very pretty. So just talk amongst yourself. Please use the comment section as your community boards. I love it when you guys talk to each other, when you share links to other projects that do not need to be mine. I love when you just inspire each other, um, connect out in the real world, whatever. All right, without further ado, I'm doing a little flip. All right. So as I said, this particular stitch pattern only takes two rows. And I'm sort of midway run one row on, on the right side. So the right side, let me get you a clearer picture. As I said before, it's multiples of three. So you're going to start by bringing your yarn forward for a yarn over. You're going to slip one and you always slip on purlwise unless the pattern tells you differently. Then you're going to knit the next two stitches. One, two, and then you take the slip stitch and you pass that over both of those knit stitches. And that is the repeat. So let's try it again. So we yarn over, we slip one, we knit two, and then we pass the slip stitch over both. Now before I do that, I want to show you how you know that it's the slip stitch and not the yarn over. If I bring this up real close and personal, you can see that the yarn over wraps all the way around. It's at this, it's kind of jauntily askew, shifting to the left. So that's the yarn over. You don't want that. You want the one that's just straight up. You're going to pass that over. Okay, and I'm going to show you one last time. So yarn over, slip one, knit two, pass that over. And then for the washcloth pattern for the coaster and the placemats that are on uh, in this month's Yarnier box and for no, I think that's just it. Um, I also did a seed stitch border, so you don't have to do that for the swatch. I didn't include the border, so you can ditch it if you want or add whatever border you want if you're designing your own piece. But that's all I'm doing here is working the rest of that seed stitch. So that's just alternating between knit and pearls. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it over on the wrong side. I'm gonna work my three stitches and seed stitch. And Carla, I see you're asking about the yarn. I'm going to go over all of that after the tutorial. Okay, so now we're set up to get started again. So on this side, we're going to yarn over again, but because we're on a purl side, that requires really wrapping the yarn. We're going to slip the next stitch, and then we are going... I've already screwed up. I'm sorry, so we're going to yarn over. We're going to slip one. And then, because we're going to purl, that's where you're getting the yarn all the way over, you will bring it in front again and you purl the next two stitches. It does not matter if you are a thrower or you knit continental method, you just need to make sure that you purl there. Then, just like you did on the front, you're going to take the slip stitch and pass it over those two stitches that you just worked. All right, so let's try that again. So I've brought my yarn forward, I'm going to slip one, I'm going to bring the yarn forward, which there creates the yarn over. I'm going to purl two. And then I will take the slip stitch and pass the slip stitch over. All right, I'm going to show you just one last time because three times a charm. Slip one. And you'll notice that you're slipping one of the stitches that was that was kind of wrangled by the past stitch over on the other route. So you're splitting them up, and that's what's creating the herringbone kind of jig-jag, the combination of the two rows. So 
yarn over, purl two, pass that over. Hi Vicki, hi Marie, nice to see you. Okay, and you'll just include, you're just going to repeat those two rows for as long as the pattern shows you. And that is really all there is to it. Really simple, but gives you kind of a interesting texture. You can see the herringbone pattern comes from what I was saying before, the sort of jig jaggy of those past stitch, stitches over. Um, and then the lace, of course, is from the alternating yarn overs. Um, so, um, oh, Stephanie's asking if you were just, if you were repeating, um, would you do the just one repeat in the round? So I need to play around with that, but the challenge with that would be, I think that you'd have to add a stitch so you'd get the, um, so that you'd alternate the slip stitches. So that's something that I need to work offline and I can do that and add that in the comment section. Thank you for the question, Stephanie. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera around so we can talk a little bit more. All right, so like I said, if you are, well, first of all, if you know anybody that would be interested in this uh, lacy herringbone stitch, just as part of their stitch library, you know, or for a particular project, please share this video. It really helps the Facebook algorithm. Um, really, it changes daily, minutely, I don't know, but it really helps when you share because um, it reads it as engagement. Um, but you, if you go to vickihowell.com, I have a post that has the multiples that you need, um, just flat. As I mentioned to Stephanie, I did not work this in the round, so um, that is not up there. But I also have, as I said before, a swatch, a uh, washcloth, and then a link to get the ginger needles that I recommended. And if you're interested, you can make the placemat set, two placemats, and two coasters. The pattern and the yarn come in this month's yarn. Um, I have a subscription box business. Um, and it is called Yarnier, and this month the focus is on al fresca. Ironically, getting outside. I think I'm trying to live vicariously um, through you all. But this is the yarn that I use for the demonstration. Um, it is Kelborn Woolens Mojave. It's a linen and cotton blend. It's got a lovely drape and does not feel all hot when you're working with it. So you get the two hanks that you need to make the set that I mentioned, um, along with the patterns for it. There's also a crochet pattern. If you're not a knitter, this is what the crochet version looks like. And then it comes with some other goodies as well. Um, personalize those napkins while you're at eating outdoor with sublime stitching, um, embroidery patterns, a to hold your yarn, a little yarn carrier. So when you're outside, you can still keep your yarn clean and be knitting in public. Um, and all of that is $35 plus flat rate shipping. You can get that at yarnyay.com. Um, so like I said, it's really great with a DK yarn like that, working on about size five, size six needles, depending um, on what look you're going for. The larger the needle, the more drapey it will be. But you could use this stitch really for anything. It would work with a really chunky wool and big old needles and make a really cool scarf too later in the winter. So even if you're not into any of the projects now, bookmark um, the page at vickihell.com or save this video wherever you are and uh, so that you can reference it for gifts later or just whenever you're looking for an interesting, um, interesting pattern. Also, one more thing on Knitter's Pride. I also have, if you want to get the whole set, we still have some ginger uh, interchangeable sets at yarnier.com as well. We've been keeping those in stock because we love them so much. Um, and that will have the needle that I use today as well. So either one is available. And that's really all I have for you today. I hope you're staying cool. I am so jealous of those of you that live in a place where it is, you know, normal temperature. And um, But I really encourage you to give this stitch a try, either by ordering the Yarnier box or just grabbing those ginger needles, your favorite cotton, linen, rayon, whatever, yarn, bamboo, and giving it a go. It's really satisfying. It's not difficult. And it has sort of like a head-turning te texture that's going to make it look like... You have much more skills than you actually have, and that's what I like. I'm all about the smoke and, smoke and mirror stitching. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you, as always, for starting your week out, for spending a little time being creative with me. Please check back for my next live feed, Ask Me Monday. Next week will be here, right here on Facebook Live, and then later on YouTube at 12 p.m. Central. All righty. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and click notify and follow and all of the things. All right. Have a great week. Bye.